All right, so I have a Comet torque converter here. And we're gonna put this on. So it goes like this. Now, I don't have the shaft or bearings or anything in this yet. <clears throat> we'll get to those a little bit. Uh, I was I drew a blue line just by hand just to see how close it was to the other one that's currently on there, like spaced with the gear and stuff. So about that much has to come off. So what we're going to do is just cut this off and then recess it for a bearing. So there's a bunch of people online I did them with step bits and mortising bits and all kinds of fun stuff. So that'll be the first thing because I want to keep my chain and stuff kind of where it is now without changing all that. So. Anyways, that's where we are at for the moment. Guys, I want to show you where I'm at. I'm going to do one pass with it too so you can get an idea of what's going on here. I'm down to this point. It took me uh, six passes to get to here. I do not have a boring tool that will fit inside this small space. And I don't have a step drill that's one and three eighths, slightly uh, smaller, so it doesn't help me. So what I'm doing is I took the milling machine. You can use a drill press if you have one. I have a straight shank. Uh, it is one, a quarter inch cut, five sixteenths bit in here and I'm using this section as a bearing against this section with some lubricant and that way you use this as your bearing surface to cut the next section down so I'm gonna do this uh, once so you can see how it is um, there is some fins under here so I use this as a thing to keep it so I can keep it flat on my base uh, this is a routing technique a lot of people use. Aluminum is very soft. I wouldn't do this in steel or anything. That'd be suicide. But aluminum, it should be fine even with a router if you have one, if you go easy, you know. Um, a drill press would be ideal. And uh, I'm just using a 5 16 bit with a quarter inch cut. And nice straight shank. Okay. Give me one second and we'll get it going. Alright, I hope it's not too noisy in here. I had to put the fan on. It's getting hot. So anyways, I think you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing to cut out this uh, hole. And maybe this will be a little clearer. So I'm right it there. We're going to go down another quarter inch for this cut. Get it up inside. Got about an eighth of an inch cut. Eighth of an inch of cut. So. And you don't really want to go much more than that because you're doing this by hand, but you want to keep it flat. Let's spray a little WD 40 on the shank. That was a one-eighth pass. 
I'm going to take this out. Should be enough if I drop the black. There's all our shavings. Start through the hoop. And as you can see, it's a nice clean cut all the way around. Exactly one and three eighths. And as long as you keep this oiled and you go slow, nice flat circle, you can cut this down to the right height that you need. So you want to leave this on until you're done cutting because the more material you'll have, the more of a bearing you'll have to rest a bit and the cuts will be very nice and clean. So I'm going to do this a few more times. I'm going to measure some stuff out and get it to the right height of where I want it to stop and we will go from there. Alright guys, so I am done. That is the finished surface of what it looks like right off the thing. I didn't anything to it yet. So I got it down to where I wanted. Uh, I just used the caliper with the uh, back side. So I figured out where I want to get to because I want 7 sixteenths pocket left over in this. And um, I'm going by the width of my bike one to make this thing. So, Anyways, you want to use this surface. Keep this oiled because this is where it rubs. When you're doing it, it acts like a bearing. Um, you don't want to use a cutter like this because it'll cut through the material you're going to use as a bearing. So, a little small cutter. I'm using 5 sixteenths. It's a three tooth. You could get four, three, two, whatever. And get a short as cutter as possible to make sure you make it past the lip. I started at 1 eighth and just make cuts all the way down until I picked the where I wanted. So that's how I did it. And keep this oiled. If you hear it squeaking or anything as you're going around, it's it's starting to grab some aluminum. So put something on it. WD-40 will work great for keeping aluminum off a bit. Um, don't use coated ones as it will coat that bit quick with aluminum. High RPM. Put it in, and you shouldn't even have to use any effort. You, your job is to keep this as flat as possible and let the bit do the work. And go to slow, take your time, and it'll come out like this. The next step, we're going to put it in probably the chop saw. And just, i got to figure out how to make it the correct orientation so I can cut it at the right angle. All right, so here is the scenario. If this will show up well, I took a square, squared it out. Uh, I propped it up a little and such. I got two really square pieces of wood I cut. Measured it a couple times, made sure the vice is against it firmly. And uh, if I could, I got it just, it's right on my uh, scratch. What I'm going to do is cut this section off, and there is seven um, sixteenths left over for my bearing to go in. Uh, that's where I'm at. I'm probably going to cut it over just like a sixteenth that way, just in case. So I have a little wiggle room in case it doesn't cut right, or you know. We are cutting a thing with aluminum. <laughs> so that way you can always sand it off, you can't put it back on. So I'm going to cut mine over just a tad from my mark and I'll get back to you in a minute. Alright, so this is the end result. I cut it off in the chop saw. Uh, this worked out pretty good. I used a uh, drill vise, put it in, leveled it up, just went like this. and right through. You can use a regular saw blade, nothing special. 
And uh, let's see, is it hot? Oh yeah, it's pretty hot. But that's it, cut it nice and clean. So now we have a nice pocket for the bearings. And uh, we're good to go. But that is how I cut my plate for my torque converter for a motorized bike. Alright, I think I got you guys so you can see this. I got a bearing. This was one of the ones that came with it. I actually even found out in the inside it was uh, dented in. So we're going to use this as a test fit bearing. Let's see if we cut that clay. See how this fits. Thanks. Nice. Fit really good. Sitting right on the ledge. I don't know if you could see in there. It's right on the ledge. This came out great. So this will be my uh, setup. And now we have one just as thick as the stock one. Alright guys, so this worked out great. Uh, just to give you guys a little info, because this is how I'm doing my torque converter for a 78.5cc motor build. Um, we got a couple processes in this. We're going to make a 5.8 shaft adapter set up that works with the drive clutch since they're all 3 quarter 1 inch. And then on the back here, uh, the bearings that come in these are 11 16 inside diameter, uh, 1 and 3 eighths outside, 7 16 thickness. So we're gonna, I just use this as a test one. This one's screwed up anyways. I'm, I'm kind of glad I popped these out because the uh, seal was bad. And it looks like they did a crap job putting them in. Um, the uh, ones that'll be going in here are one and three eighths by seven sixteenths by five eighths. And we'll be using a standard five eighths jack shaft. Um, this side will be threaded and it'll go through the clutch like normal, come out. Uh, this side will have a, uh, a sprocket on it, but the sprocket will have set screws in it. I'm actually gonna use the ones that are on the bike currently since it's 5 16 shafts, and we'll put that on, and then I will put a collar on it with lock screws as well to lock it in place. And the end one will actually hold the key as well. So, I have an 8 inch jack shaft coming. Uh, 3 inches of it over here. It's basically 2 through here and 2 out here. It's a little bit left over, but it won't hurt anything. You could cut it off or leave it. So, anyways, this is where I'm at. Uh, this will be part 1. Um, I'm going to be getting a shaft in a couple days in the mail here, and that'll be in the next part, and then we'll get this going. Alright.